you ever noticed that not all cliffs look exactly the same? It's because they've got what we call different cliff profiles. So what I'm going to take you through tonight is why different cliffs have different cliff profiles. To explain the influence of geological factors on the formation of contrasting cliff profiles. We need to fundamentally understand what do we mean by a cliff profile? Now this is something that a lot of students struggle with. They see the wording cliff profile in a question and they don't really exactly know what it means. They know what a cliff is, but a cliff profile? What exactly can we talk about in response to this question? Cliff profiles. I always tell my students to focus on two things when we're talking about cliff profile. Okay, first things first, you talk about the angle of the cliff face. What does it look like? Is it like this? Is it like this? Is it like this? You see where I'm going. Yeah, so we talk about the angle of the cliff face. Second thing we talk about, features and landforms. That's it. So all you're doing when you're talking about contrasting cliff profiles is you're talking about are there different cliff profiles with different angles of cliff face and are there any distinguishing features and landforms? But what we're doing in this question is obviously relating it to geological factors. What the examiner is looking for you to do is establish relationships. What's the relationship between geological factors and your cliff profile. So let's go through some cliff profiles. So just some examples, I gave some before. Sometimes your cliffs can look like this. Sometimes they can look like this. Sometimes they can look like this. So what we would say is that they are contrasting cliff profiles. So how can we relate this to geological factors? Now we need to fundamentally go through what are our geological factors. So our geological factors, they break down into two things. So it breaks down into geological structure and lithology. Geological structure can be understood as the way that rock strata are arranged. So if you imagine it like building a house, it's the equivalent of the way that the bricks are arranged to actually formulate that house or that building. That's geological structure. Lithology is if we were to put a microscope on one of those bricks, what would those bricks be made of? What would be the internal composition? What would be the mineral composition? That's our lithology. But then once we've got to this stage, we can break down geological structure and lithology into subcategories once again. So our three categories within geological structure, we've got the arrangement of strata, we've got deformation, like your dip, your folding, and we've got weaknesses as well. So we need to determine which of these are going to be relevant to our question. So arrangements of strata, that's when we're talking about concordant and discordant coastlines. Probably not relevant to this question. Deformation, dip, folding, that is definitely going to be relevant to our question. Weaknesses, presence of weaknesses, things like joints, fissures, uh, possibly even faults. Yeah, we're definitely putting that in. So as you can see, geological structure can, I think we're already starting to formulate our plan here, geological structure will have an influence on either the angle of the cliff face or features and landforms that we will see in that cliff face. Lithology, as we've already said, this is kind of like our, our rock type. Now our rock type, that will definitely determine how our cliff face looks, even if we just think about it from the perspective of hard or more resistant versus soft and unconsolidated rocks. We can already see in our mind's eye, can't we? There's definitely going to be some differences when we've got a lignified rock, something that is a hard structure, versus something that is unconsolidated. It's sediment particles only held together by friction. What we're going to go through now is obviously linking these geological factors here and linking it to these here. Stick with me. So what we're going to do, we're going to formulate a very, very basic plan. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but you'll see from the way that I've planned it that you can probably add in that detail yourself. So let's first start off with lithology. Like we've already said, if we have um, a hard rock, something like a, a granite or a, an old sandstone, immediately what we've done now is we've gotten the A01 into our answer. Sometimes it's good to add a place. Land's End. Now, if you can visualise the cliffs at Land's End, they'd be like this. What we describe this as is steep, tall, and rugged. They're more resistant. They've resisted erosion for a long time. Yeah, so these lithified cliffs, these hard rock cliffs, 
They're usually tall, with a steep face, and obviously quite rugged in appearance. Whereas, soft rock, or let's go with our unconsolidated rock. Consolidated rock, something like a, a boulder clay or something like that, you'll see a more gentle sloping beach profile. Not beach profile, cliff profile. So with our unconsolidated rock, less steep, less tall, less rugged, it definitely won't be as high. It will look more like that. A gradual sloping cliff profile. Now there's another way that we can use lithology. Again, we're talking about rock types here. And it doesn't just have to be one singular rock type that determines the shape of our cliff. Sometimes our cliffs will have what's called a complex cliff profile. Observe. That, ladies and gents, is a complex cliff profile. But the reason we've got a complex cliff profile like that, where there's very uneven development of the cliff face, is because it's a sedimentary rock, but we've got different lithologies in the vertical arrangement, okay? So the vertical, there's a differing vertical arrangement of differing lithologies. So our protruding sections here, these are obviously gonna be our more resistant rock types, whereas our less resistant rock types, they're gonna be here. So this is where we'll see more notches. So once again, we can use lithology to explain the shape of the cliff. Yeah, so once again, that shape, that idea of shape, how the cliff appears, that goes into our cliff profile, okay? So let's recap. What we've got is lithology to be able to explain how we've got some steep cliff profiles versus some long, more gradually sloping cliff profiles. This part here, where we've got a differing vertical arrangement of lithologies, that's where we'll get our complex cliff profile, where we've got different rock types. We might have an A, a B, a C, a back to an A, a C, a B, an A, a C. There are different rock types, okay? But because they've got different rock types, there's varying resistances to the forces of erosion. We'll get this kind of arrangement here. Hopefully that's making sense. So now let's get on to geological structure. So we've had two paragraphs on lithology, we can now do two on geological structure. Okay, so if you remember, geological structure, presence of weaknesses, and we also decided to use the degree to which it's deformed, yeah, the, or the degree to which deformation's taken place. So we'll do dip first. This is one of our... This is one of our easiest to remember paragraphs. So remember, we've got four different dip types. Horizontal. Low angle seaward. High angle seaward landward. This is definitely going to produce differing cliff profiles. With our horizontal dipping bedding planes, we're going to get a vertical 90 degree cliff face. With this, we're going to get an overhang. With this, the cliff face correlates with the dip angle. So we're going to get a nice sloping dip angled cliff. With this one here, it looks a little bit like that, but obviously it's a little bit more stable. What are some things that we can comment on? Well, usually, here and here, and we can comment on this as part of the profile. We'll see some scree. So that's another way that geological structure can relate to a different profile. So, so far what we've got is three paragraphs on the angle of the cliff face, or the shape of the cliff face and how it looks. So the final paragraph on geological structure is gonna be on weaknesses. So when we're talking about weaknesses, we can combine it with another element of geological structure. So usually there's weaknesses because of tectonic forces. Now tectonic forces can cause folding. So if we take a bedding plane, so if we apply tectonic forces, sometimes what can happen, folding can take place. As you can see there, straight lines become curvy lines. What appears along the curves, we get weaknesses. Now these weaknesses, remember, they can be exploited by wave action. They can be exploited by subaerial processes. And then what we will see as a consequence of the fact that there's weaknesses in this cliff face, we will see certain features start to appear. Think weaknesses, think features. So if we have weaknesses in our cliff face, nice and simple. A weakness can be exploited. This could become a notch, then become an overhang. We could then see some scree. In other places, the, the, the fact that there is folding and that folding has taken place, that leads to weaknesses. Sometimes we can see an arch. Now that feature we'll see our dirtle door. So there's just a few examples of how geological factors can lead to different cliff profiles. But the main thing that I want you to get from this video 
is an understanding of what we actually mean by cliff profile. So fundamentally, if we understand cliff profiles and we understand what geological factors are, we're on our way to being able to answer this question. But as this is something that students really, really struggle with in terms of a concept, it's easier to go through it with a question. Okay, so hopefully that's cleared up cliff profiles for you. Tune in for another video later.